Hi everyone, my name is Filippo and Black Magic Design, what you did here. So yesterday night I saw the live event launch for DaVinci Resolve 17 and I'm stoked. I'm stoked for all those little features that they add and I'm here super excited after almost 24 hours or even less showing you some of the biggest features from this update. Be sure to watch the video till the end because I got a thing for you. So guys, welcome to DaVinci Resolve 17 Public Beta. Again, we are less than 24 hours inside uh, DaVinci Resolve 17 download and release. And I want to talk to you about some of the best features they released so far on this program. Some of my favorite features so far, such as the HDR uh, manage there. It's simply beautiful. I want to talk about the cut page, the Fairlight page that you know, had a huge change. Uh, you got few things that are great inside it. I want to talk a bit about the edit page, but mainly about the color page and all the different features that we got from this version of the Venture Soul. First of all, uh, on the edit page, we have some things like those, you know, little previews on the FX library that I already love and waited for so long because right now you can see directly there the preview of the effect on your clip and this is a you know better way to manage your effects i really love it another thing is that on your inspector when you're pressing your clip and go into inspector you have all you know those little part grayed out if you don't have any effects or audio on the clip and you can interact with those different parts from the specific file select this this one and you can manage from there everything so if, so if you add an effect on your clip this won't have to pop up uh in on, on on the right side of your video or audio whatever there is there and you got everything managed there and this is great they add also some in incredible things like the smarter frame so if you go on your project and you change your timeline settings and make it, I don't know, square, and then you want to activate this like smart crop, it's going to reframe your your image inside a square or a vertical size. So this is a pretty great thing. Other thing on the edit page where the the composite that right now is there separated from the transform uh and yeah everything is pretty much the same but i want to talk about the edit page that much the huge difference is already there i want to talk about the color page a lot so i took this program this project sorry that we are uh grading right now actually this one was graded by my colleague uh tobia give him a follow on Instagram or on other social media. And we already made a note tree with the 16 version of uh, DaVinci Resolve. And we want to reopen the project inside DaVinci Resolve 17 and watch what we can do with this. And so first thing first, the, the first thing you can see is that the primary wheels are managed in a different way. You don't have to switch from one part to the other. You have everything you need on the top and the bottom part. So if you are on the log wheels, you got your ranges there and not on the bottom part, but everything you needed is there, so it's not separated on two different pages. And the way that it shows, it's pretty different, but everything stayed in the same uh, way. Huge difference makes the HDR uh, the dynamic range, you know, panel. So there you have an incredible tool that in my opinion mixed up what you were doing with the primaries and what you were doing on the log wheel in an even better way this is pretty much revolutionary in my opinion and the great thing about that is that you have all the area of your image separated from the blackest part to moving forward the specular part and you might say what is the specular part so specular highlights are those little I don't know, shiny regions like, I don't know, this little part, or if you have a candle or a super bright part, uh, mainly I will say that specular is dedicated for things um, like, um, I don't know, lamps or practical lights that are pretend to be there, but sometimes might burn out 
uh, outside from your iri and you can manage those light with the specular but all those little parts where are watchable where, where can i see what those these effects so first thing first you can press on this little button down here and this will highlight the area that are working on that specific region so dark dark areas black areas so right now nothing because we are lifted up shadows all those regions gone up we have lights and we got almost nothing in the highlight and the specular because we are stopping everything there and if i want to see all those you know little parts regions in a better way i can just press there and it will expand those regions uh physically on this window so it will open this window and there's a brand new window dedicated to each part so Let's say that I want to make, let's make a new node there. Right now I'm not using the panel because I want to see those things, how it works. But obviously this is not integrated on my node tree. It's just to let you see how this works. So let's just say that I want to, I don't know, make this shadow even darker. So I can go there and pull the exposure down. As you can see from my parade, shadows are going down. And if I go there, pressing shadows that are actually there, I can manage where where my shadows are applying. So where is the maximum range of my shadow? I can also adjust the file off of everything I'm going to do there. So maybe if I want to add some cyan on the shadows, I can, you know, let's say I want a file off a thinner fella, something like there. The range, where are we working? Okay. And the maximum range and the fell off are also customizable on, on this way. Got the, the fell off there. And the range there. And if you're familiar with log wheels, this is a better way to work specifically on detailed part of the image obviously this is thing for hdr images because you can brighten up everything to 1000 nits and just not 100 nits this project were thing for the web so we set this up to 100 nits but it's still really good to work on high detailed footage and make tiny adjustments on tiny regions of your image in a really specific and great way so let's say that on this lighted up region i just want to make a little boost on on the oranges maybe on that way but not that much so i just want to low the saturation a bit of it and play just a bit with the full off okay and with the range where does this work what's affecting right now so okay you're playing a bit with this and you're just playing cool with just some parts of your image that you can also manage and change a bit as you want so this is a really powerful tool and this is pretty great you can even create new zones and I, I'm literally looking up to working with HDR footage on this and I'll surely post something more for this. Also another great thing, so let's delete this, make a new node. Another great thing was the color warper that it's divided by new, uh, two categories, sorry, the use saturation and the chroma and luma. So from this way, the great thing is that you can separate your image by you know, opening up this grid, adding more points, and by more points, I mean points for the U resolution and the saturation resolution. We got saturation there and U there as a clock, obviously. So we got from maximum saturate to zero saturation, that is white. And the great thing about this color warper is that we can play with it directly on it or directly on the image. So let's say that I 
want to take part of this skin tone and as you can see as we move on the image a little pointer is also moving on the color warper so if I go there and I want to change just this little region I can just press and move on the right or on the left if, if I want to change the U and up and down if I want to change just the saturation this is a really powerful tool and if you got 10 bits or 12 bits or even higher images it's good for you to make tiny adjustment uh, cranking up this number you know opening up the possibility of working in, uh, in the better way in the precisest way possible if you want you can use 6x6 but with 6x6 as you can see we will have a bigger you know change and this won't be that much accurate so you got a high quality image be sure to crank this up we also have color spaces here that you can change and this really great tools that will help you make super uh, detailed adjustment I don't know maybe I just want to take and select a uh, region and this region maybe I just want to pull the points or crank them out or I just wanna maybe stick some uh, points and pin them maybe I wanna draw a selection of points just a little selection of points and I want to be really accurate I can do that I can also expand it and keep it on another monitor this is really good and this is a really great way to work with the color warper I can also switch to the chroma and Luma in the same way as you can see we've got the chroma resolution and the Luma resolution and even in this way we can work directly on the image or directly on the grid and as you can see by sticking up points on different areas you can control the chroma and the Luma and this is great we also have the axis angle that we can rotate so we have a cubicle vision of our coral space and in my opinion this is really great all different tools of, of selection are also there so be sure to give it a try and I will talk about that on the masterclass on my color reading masterclass deeply nothing were changed on the qualifier still is great still amazing and just a little thing were changed on the curves they add on in the end saturation versus luminance on the tracker nothing changed on the window nothing changed but we got this magic mask what's a magic mask we're already masking with windows but what is this magic mask it's an incredible thing you got person and features and that that person thing oh my gosh that feature thing oh my god if you just want to make a selection on of a of a specific part of the body head hair face let's try with face let's draw with a pipette a little you know some little things here let's see what he is selecting look at this with a faster quality let's say better quality and if we press play he is gonna track my face that's great i don't want to do that by the way now and if i press person so where is that this if i press person i'm gonna select like this and this let's see what he's doing that's great that's really amazing better better resolution look at the corners this being a little photoshop and it's incredible if you want to separate your subject from the background let's say that in this case maybe you want to make a parallel node and then pull down everything that is on the background i can do that in like five seconds and this is great in my opinion so one of the biggest thing is also this nothing changed on the blur tool nothing changed on the key nothing changed on the sizing and on the 3d but they change few things on the way scopes shows up so right now you can also detach uh, scopes and you can grid them up to nine scopes in a unique square and you can place it on another window another great thing on the open effects is that as in the edits and on the fair lights pages we have tons of new effects 
Some of them are really incredible. One th thing that I like a lot is the motion trail. You can just apply to your image and it will blur out everything that is moving. You got this mirror, the stop motion, you got this new Resolve FX texture, real amazing. We also have the Resolve FX key, so right now we can key out our subject, our colors from the image directly uh, from an effect. So we can draw our image and just make a correction, a selection. And we got this incredible FX stylized panel that let me say once again that we are moving to Photoshop once more. These are some super powerful tools that helps us uh, increase the quality of, of our image or add some great effects that are, you know, usable on some different ways, but everything that we're on, like Photoshop now is there on the Resolve FX stylized. Clips and timeline and everything else remain the same, so we we're not seeing huge differences there, but one great thing that I noticed there is just on the project settings. We got some few new things. We can just manage lookup tables on a different way and have a lot for the folder directly on the color management and the color space. Oh my God. Right now, if you want to have a color managed uh, space inside your project, you can just manage this in a better, even even better way. So you can just select your preset there from the most used one to the custom. If you just want to come back to uh, the older version of Resolve and just make it custom uh, in the way it's good for you. If you want to crank up your graphics white level of more than 100 nits, you can do it without uh, having a timeline set for HDR mastering. And they obviously add new timeline color spaces such as Direct 2020's newest one with some presets for uh, the NIT standard for HDR. And that's a really insane uh, update in my opinion. And I'm gonna talk more about those topics and those new features inside my masterclass. Link is down, I'm gonna update it with everything new is in DaVinci Resolve 17. But a 24 hour from the release, that's everything that amazed me the most. So thanks for watching and if you struggle understanding some parts of this video, I got a complete color grading masterclass on my Podia store. It's a complete masterclass for all those filmmakers who want to master DaVinci Resolve and color grading. I'm already writing and recording some of the videos that will complete this masterclass with the 17 update. So all the little thing we saw there will be updated inside the masterclass. This is the moment for you to switch from your editing program, whatever it is, to the Vintage Soul. Because there's nothing better on the market than this piece of software. All the explanation and topics of my 11-hour masterclass are down at the link in the description. Thanks for watching, I'll see you inside.